to the Musical Chairs Podcast, the only podcast that invites you to pull up a chair and take a listen. Now, we're doing an audio-only podcast this time, so I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to imagine. Imagine your host, Nelson Velasquez. That's me. I want you to imagine me, not my normal, beautiful, bald-headed self, but rather a wonderful, vibrant, dark olive skin with long, curly locks of brown hair glistening in the sunlight. And I want you to also imagine me wearing white base all over my face, a black star over my right eye, and some red lipstick, and me puckering up. You feel that? Do you feel, do you feel that right now? Is, is this turning you on? Well, it should, because it should be conjuring up images of the band Kiss, the all-time sexiest band on the planet. Now, they're in the news again because they've been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So since they've been inducted, you know, they've been offered up a slot to actually perform. What typically happens when you get into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, one of two things happens. The first thing that happens is you get a bunch of jagoffs out there that go, well, they should have been inducted like a long time ago, man. I'm still waiting for Rush, man. Yeah. Or you get a lot of those guys. And then you get the guys who are like, oh, man, you know, if you're going to induct any part of that band, you're going to induct the original members. And there are a lot of people who feel the same way. Well, it turns out that KISS is going to forego, at least as of right now, their performance for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And the reason is because of this very same conundrum. As you may or may not know, KISS hasn't been the original KISS for quite some time. Um, and they've had a, a couple of players uh, working with them, I believe Bruce Kulik and uh, Eric Singer, who've been longtime members of the band in, in different inc- incarnations. Um, and they've been playing with KISS for quite some time and actually recorded records. Um, and as of late, they've been dressing up as the original members, Ace Freely and uh, Peter Chris. Uh, so they got the Starman and the, and the Cat uh, makeup, which has caused all kinds of like, man, you should do that, man. You should come up with new characters. So the, the conundrum here is that Kiss can't get a lineup to agree to play the, Hall, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Um, so as you might imagine, that's kind of putting a lot of interesting uh, discussions on the board. Who should actually go into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Is it the original members of Gene, Paul, Chris, and Ace? Is it, you know, the current members? Is it everyone in between, you know, 1972 and, you know, 2014? Like, who should actually go into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Now, me personally, this is a very good, uh, very good discussion to have because I feel that it depends, right? So. Let's take, uh, you know, Iron Maiden, for example. Iron Maiden singer, it's not the original singer of the band, right? They got famous with um, Bruce Dickinson, right? But the original guy, they fired. So, if they go into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, they probably already are. Uh, I'm in the car, man, I can't look it up. Uh, You look it up. So, if they go into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, what lineup is supposed to go in? Well, if you say original members, well, that's probably not going to work. Most people wouldn't consider the original singer of Iron Maiden as part of the classic lineup, right? So, um, you know, and it kind of just really depends on the lineup, depends on what they've done since the original members were in there, so on and so forth. Now, I can apply this to myself, right? The Smashing Pumpkins, my favorite band of all time, right? Not the original members currently. And the question, you know, when they get into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, because it will happen, you know, the question will be, well, who should play? Who should who should be inducted and why? Right? Should it be everybody or should it be, you know, uh, the original members of uh, Billy, James, uh, Darcy, and Jimmy, right? And I will answer that by saying it should be everybody. That's right. I said it. Every member of the Pumpkins should be in there. Well, it's uh, off. No, no, no. Except the Tory members. Tory members, sorry. You don't get it, but if you've recorded under the name of the Smashy Pumpkins, you should be inducted in there as well. So Kenny Aronoff should get in there, and Matt Walker should get in there, and and uh, you know the current the current folks should be in there, and the classic lineup. Now, as far as the performance is concerned, 
I'd like to see something like what happened with Metallica. Right when Metallica got in, you know, they had everybody playing, which is awesome. I think that's that's the best way of going about doing it. And uh, Cliff was there too, so don't harp on me. Cliff was there too. He was in his bell button jeans playing, you know, Master Puppets and, uh, you know, providing his blessing over the band while they were performing in this ghostly apparitional state. Okay? But anyway, I like to see Kiss maybe do the same thing. I think, you know, you can argue that Kiss wouldn't be Kiss today if it wasn't for all the people in between the original members and now. And you could also argue on the flip side that Kiss hasn't been relevant since the original members. And I could understand that as well. I'm no fanboy of Kiss. So, so for me, it's uh, um, a very good, um, it's a very good uh, uh, debate to be had, but I think, I think ultimately what's going to happen with this is that KISS is going to somehow pull it together at the very last minute because someone's going to offer them enough money for them to actually stand on stage together and uh, play together. And I think it's going to happen. So I'd like to offer some alternatives for KISS. If in the event KISS is not able to pull this off and we've, we've got to go with something different. I think my first suggestion is that you bring back holograms of the actual band right so they're all holograms and they play to a pre-recorded track and then nobody can say that well i don't know if that was peter i don't know if that was bruce like who's up there huh huh yeah i like this idea that's a good idea so holograms is my first thing the second thing i do is that you know that's too costly or not worth it then why not hire like a bunch of little people to go up on stage dress as Kiss and perform Kiss songs. But they do like miniature versions of a Kiss song. So maybe it's like, I want to rock and roll some nights and party twice a month, right? I, I don't know what the constitution of little people are. I'm going to guess it's it's not normal. Uh, you know, it's not a big person's um, constitution. So maybe they have to rest a lot more because they expend more energy. Okay, I don't know where that was going. But anyway, so that's my second suggestion. Then my third suggestion would be set up a karaoke machine and play the songs and then just have random people sing for them. You know, because, I mean, they're 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 one step away from the karaoke bar, you know? And, and there's some hardcore Kiss fans out there who would be able to pull off that kind of performance. So I'm thinking, you know, why not try it and... You know, if KISS doesn't care enough about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, maybe their fans do. And that's all I've got for the Musical Chairs podcast. Please subscribe down below. If you like it, comment on it. If you didn't like it, comment on it anyway. I'm your host, Nelson Velasquez, and I look forward to getting back in front of a video camera soon. Bye.